Hi, I'm Phoebe. I'm a data analyst at Bitnamic, and today I'm going to be talking you through GA4. So just a bit of an overview. We're going to go over when is GA4 coming, what is GA4, day-to-day -day uses of GA4, and some bonus content. So GA4 is coming, and on the 1st of July 2023, standard universal analytics properties will no longer process your data. Data will be available on there for six months, but it will be read only. So that's why it's really important to try and switch over to GA4 now to try and retain as much data as possible. So what actually is GA4? GA4 is just another Google Analytics property, but there are some big differences between GA4 and Universal Analytics. So Universal Analytics used to collect data just from one source. That might be your website. GA4 can collect data across different data streams. So that might be iOS, Android, and your website. GA4 uses event-based data rather than session-based data. So we're focusing more on things that actually happen on your website, such as clicks, scrolls, video views, downloads, and conversions. GA4 includes privacy controls, such as cookie list management, behavioral and conversion modeling, and it has some predictive capabilities. So the standard reports that we were used to in Universal Analytics have been replaced by lifecycle reports in GA4. So if you go into your account and go to reports, you'll find the lifecycle section here. If you click into acquisition, this is all about how people are getting to your website. So we can see our users over time. If we click at user acquisition, we can see which channels are leading people to come to our website. If you go into an engagement tab, this is all about how people are interacting with your website once they're there. If you click on events, you can see the events that you have specifically designed and see how many event counts you're getting and how many total users you're getting for those events that are important to your business. The monetization section is about e-commerce and what's happening on your website when people are buying things. If we click on e-commerce purchases, we can see a list of our items and see how much revenue they've created and how many views they've gotten. The retention section of the lifecycle reports is about whether you're getting new users or returning customers. So you can see you've got new users here or returning customers here. You can also see down the bottom your lifetime value as well. So GA4 has tried to move away from using bounce rate. However, it is still available to view. You just have to look for it. So if we go into our lifecycle reports, engagement and pages and screens here. Then if we click on this customize report button on the top right corner, we end up here. Here, you can do what it says and customize your reports. So if we click on metrics, we can add a metric and we can search for bounce rate. Then when we click apply, it should appear in our report. To change how long you keep data for in your GA4 property, you need to go to admin, data settings, and data retention. Here, you can choose how long you want to retain your data for. So the audience segments that used to exist on Universal Analytics have been replaced with comparisons. To get to the comparisons, you can click here on add comparison, and then you can filter your data. So we might want to look at age and only people who are 18 to 24. If we apply that, we should then be able to see the comparison between all users and people just in that comparison. Another really useful thing on GA4 is a quick way to get insights. So if we click on this insight button on the top right, and we can look at these different categories. So let's look at user acquisition. Here then, it has pre-made questions that you can have a look at and get the answers to. So let's look at how many users from organic search in the last 30 days. If we click here, it gives us the answer from our actual GA account. So we've got 4.8 thousand users. A really good thing about GA4 is that it's really customizable. So a great tab to have a look at is this explore tab here. When you click in here, you can see that you've got different templates to make your own reports. And I really encourage you to take a look in there. They've got great things like predictive modeling. If you're working with advertising and you wanna see which channels are contributing towards conversions, the advertising tab is a really good place to go. So if you click in here, 
and you go to conversion paths, you can see which touch points are important for your customer's journey. So here we can see that an early touch point when somebody was looking to buy something was paid shopping. The mid touch point was organic search and then paid shopping was also really important towards the end of their customer journey when they went to buy. I hope you found this video useful. If you want to learn anything more about Google Shopping or GA4, please get in touch with us.